Hello and welcome to the introduction to Practicad's Tagging Automatics. In the following tutorials, we're going to go over all the different options Practicad offers to allow you to use automatics to tag your drawing with text and annotations. The first step you must do to utilize a Practicad Auto Tagging Automatic is to go into the Automatic panel on your Practicad ribbon and select the Auto Tag icon. Here Practicad is going to open up the four different tabs with the four different options. We have Selection tab, Condition tab, Placement tab, and Tag tab. The first two tabs are the Selection and Condition tabs. In this exercise, we're not going to cover how to utilize these options. We're just going to pick the options here. There are tutorials entitled How to Use Auto Selection, Selection tab Full, and How to Use Auto Selection, Condition tab Full. It is located under the Selection Automatic Tutorials. You must watch both of these before you continue on with the Tag and Placement tabs. The first tab we're going to cover in the Tagging Automatic Tutorials is the Tag tab. Once you've selected your criteria for selection and conditions, now we want to choose what tag we'd like to incorporate into this particular automatic. We're going to go over to the Tag tab, and here you're going to see a list of all the different tag types that Practicat offers. All you need to do is double click on the category you would like to open up, and then go down to the drop down menu of all the tags in your data and select the one you'd like to utilize for this automatic. In this tutorial, we're going to choose the Length Tag Rectduct. After you've selected your tag, the only thing left to do is now go into the Placement tab and choose the placement parameters you'd like this tag placed in. The placement tab options are the last options you need to fill out before you can run a Practicad tagging automatic. What we have done thus far is we have selected the tag we'd like to use. We're going to choose the length tag rec duct. For selection, we are actually going to choose fittings, duct line forward, line with branches. And for conditions, we're only going to check rectangular duct. Here what we've decided to do for this automatic is we're only going to run an automatic that's going to place the length tag down on rectangular duct only. Once we have those three tabs filled out, we can come in and now choose the placement parameters. Now there are a lot of options for placement parameters, so we're going to go over them one at a time. The first thing you should do before you fill out any other information on the placement tab is choose the proper preview. The preview section is designed to make it easier to see whether or not the parameters you're choosing for your text are in fact going to place your text down in the right position. There are two basic options we need to start for the preview. The first option is going to be what entity we'd like to see. Notice here that currently all we have is the choice for rectangular duct when we pull the drop down menu. The choices for preview are going to come from whatever fittings or entities you have checked in conditions. For example, had we checked rec duct and no waste rectangular duct, if we now go over to placement, you're going to notice that we have an option to use either one of these fittings in order to view our tags. Once we've selected the entities we'd like to preview, we now need to choose the angle increments we'd like to see the entities at. Currently, we have it selected under Preview Rec Duct 90 degrees. 90 degrees means that we only want to see our rec duct in the preview at 90 degree increments. Here you can see we have a duct going at 0 degrees to the drawing, this one which is going 90 degrees, the one on the left is going at 180 degrees, and the one below is going at 270 degrees. If we would like to see the increments at 45 as well or any other angle, we can choose the proper one and now Practicad will display the entity in the preview at 45 degree increments. It is recommended whenever you're designing tagging automatics to always keep your angle increment at least at 45. Utilizing 90 can get you into trouble later, and we're going to explain why when we get into position parameters, but it's highly recommended to always leave it at 45 degrees or a lower angle increment like 30 or 22 and a half. Most of the time we're utilizing 45 degrees. Once you're inside the preview screen, you can actually maneuver these fittings by utilizing your standard pan, zoom, and orbit commands. 
Now you can activate them by utilizing the icon here for pan, the icon here for zoom, and the icon here for orbit. But also, the preview window works just like your AutoCAD screen. So you could hold down your wheel mouse if you have that option on your mouse to pan. You can scroll through it to zoom, and you could also hold down your left mouse if you'd like to orbit. Here what we're going to do is select orbit, click once, and now we can orbit the drawing. So we'd be able to orbit, pan, and zoom all utilizing our standard wheel mouse. We don't need the icons. If you ever would like to reset your preview window, currently the easiest way to do it is to simply click on the tag tab, come back to placement, and Practicab will recenter everything back into top view for you. If you would like to change the properties of the entities you see in your preview window, you can do it from the properties section. Basically, Practicad is going to list all of the properties that are associated with whatever entity you have selected in your preview drop-down option. Here we have chosen rectangular duct, so we're going to get the parameters within, depth, and length, and the remaining ones that you see here. If we would like to see these fittings instead of 36 width, at 22 width, we can simply type in the parameter we'd like to see, and Practicad will adjust the preview for us. As we look at the parameters going from top to bottom under the placement tab, the first one we're going to come to is the view choices. Here we get a drop down menu and Practicad is going to start from the current view and then go all the way to the top, bottom, left and right views, front and back, and of course your isometric views. Basically what choosing the view does is Practicad will place the tag in such a way so that if you are standing in a specific view, you were looking directly at it, regardless of how you tag the drawing. For example, what we're going to do is run the automatic on an isometric drawing utilizing the view current. We're going to press OK. Here we are about to be prompted to select the fitting to run the automatic, and we have this automatic set for current view. The drawing isn't isometric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first duct and notice that Practicat is tagging the tags based on the current view we're looking in. Because we chose view, current view, Practicat makes it so the face of those tags is staring right at you in the current view. This would mean that if we actually took this drawing and put it in top view, that the tags would actually be slanted. However, had we chosen the view top, regardless of how the isometric view or whatever view the duct was in that we were going to run the automatic on, it would make it so that the tag's face were always facing as if you were looking at it from top view. To demonstrate this, we're actually going to clear off the tags and we're going to run the automatic again. We're going to go to the auto tag automatic. You'll notice that Practicad will retain the settings of the last thing we did. So all we're going to do is go back to placement parameters, and here we're going to choose instead of current, we're going to choose top, and we're going to press OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tag it again. Take note that the drawing is currently in isometric view. However, because we chose view top, when I click and it runs the automatic, it positions the tag in such a way so that when I am looking from top view, the tags are always correct. So here you can see that if we go into plan view, the tags are looking square in the face at us, which means this is going to look right. Most of the time when you're designing auto tag automatics, we usually choose to either use current or top view. Top view means that it's always going to tag the tags so that when we're in plan view or when we're plotting, the tags are looking right at us. Current view is going to mean that whatever view the drawing is at that current time, the tags are going to be staring you square in the face. So if you tag something from front view, the tags will look right in front view. But once you rotate that drawing into top view, they will not. So almost always we choose top view or we choose current view, but when we run the automatic, we make sure that we're running the automatic from plan view. The next option we have is place by. Here you're going to notice that we get the choices for in, 
out one, out two, and out three. Now, place by in a way is linked to the direction interval parameters we're about to get to. What place by in means is that the direction interval parameters we're choosing here are going to be based on the angle the in joint is located at. For example, we're going to come over to conditions and we're actually going to add an elbow, one square elbow to the list of conditions so that we can come into the placement tab and under the preview we're going to do square elbow. We're just going to focus on this elbow here. The way PractiCAD deals with direction intervals and the way we dictate what angle this fitting is to the drawing is we draw a center line through either the in joint or the out joint. If we drew a center line through the in joint of this duct, that center line would be at zero degrees to the drawing. So in other words, we'd say that since we're going to choose direction intervals and we've chosen place by in, when we go to choose our direction intervals, if we say tag elbows at zero degrees, this elbow will get tagged because the center line or a layout line through the center in joint, as notated here, would be parallel to the zero degree line of the drawing. However, if we said place by out one, this would be the out one. If we decide to hold our fittings and choose direction intervals based on the out joint, here this duct would be notated as 270 degrees to the drawing because we would be drawing a layout line through the out joint through the center of the out joint. And if we drew a layout line through the center of the out joint in the direction you can see that my cursor is going, that line would be going at 270 degrees to the drawing. So if we place a tag down by the direction interval and hold by the in, the tag would get placed if we said place it at zero degrees. However, if we said place by out one, and we had said place tags on the direction interval 270 degrees, here the elbow would get a tag because this elbow is going according to the out joint at 270, according to the in joint at zero. Most of the time for virtually every automatic in the software, we just leave it on place by in. 99.9% .9 of the time, you can leave this on place by in. All default automatics in Practicad utilize thus far the in place by. And once again, this is going to dictate and make more sense when we jump into the direction interval section we're about to do shortly. The direction interval parameters are the most important to understanding how to get your tags to be placed on your entities at the proper positions and orientations based on the different angles your duct or entities are to the drawing. What the direction interval allows us to do is specify angles using the direction wheel and tell PractiCAD that if our duct happens to be at the angles we've chosen in a particular set, then those tags should follow the parameters for positioning below. The first thing we're gonna do in this exercise, we're going to create two sets. We can add as many different selection sets or direction interval sets as we'd like by simply clicking on the green, create a new item or add icon, and for every click, PractiCAD will create a new set. If we click here, you'll see that it'll go down to set three. If we'd like to remove one, highlight the one you'd like to remove and click on the little delete key. In this tutorial, we're going to keep it on two selection sets. Once we have the number of direction interval sets chosen, we now need to choose the different angles to define each set. We're going to choose angles by simply clicking on the direction wheel. I've clicked once under set one and it's cleared the wheel. 
If I click on the first slice of the pie, Practicat is going to show you that the direction interval is currently 4 when duct is running between 45 degrees and 90 degrees to the drawing. Once again, to define how Practicat interprets what angle an entity is to the drawing, what Practicat does is based upon your place by settings, here we're choosing in, most of the time we choose in, Practicat would draw a little center line through the beginning or the in joint of the duct and the angle of that center or layout line would dictate the orientation of a particular fitting. In this particular case, this duct here would be at zero degrees because if we drew a layout line through the in joint, through the center line, it would be at zero degrees to the drawing. If we came to the fitting up here and drew a layout line through the in joint, that line would be at 45 degrees to the drawing. Therefore, you can see that the only place that Practicat is currently putting tags based on set one's direction interval is if the duct is between 45 degrees and 90 degrees. So here you can see that this duct would be at 90, this duct would be at 45, and therefore that's the only place, if we run the automatic, that Practicat will place those tags. If we go to select this piece of the pie, Practicat will update the direction interval window. It'll show us from 0 to 90. And now you can see that this duct, because it's at 0 degrees, it's getting tagged. So what we want to do is we want to choose the different direction intervals for each set. What we're going to do here is for set 1, we're going to say that we'd like it to go all the way from 90 degrees all the way down to 270 degrees. And then what we're going to do is for set two, we're going to say that we would like it to pick up where the other one left off. So what we're going to do here for set two is we're going to say we're just going to highlight the other sides of the wheel. Now one very important thing to mention, if you design your direction intervals correctly, you should never reuse the same angle twice. Which means that if I were to look at the preview, notice here that I can see a 56 inch tag because under set 2, the direction interval goes from 90 to 270. So 90 degrees is up here and it's going all the way down the wheel to 270 degrees. And this duct on the drawing is at 270 because of where it's angled. Notice that under set 1, we also have it going from 90 all the way to 270, which means that if we run the automatic, we're going to get a tag twice at 270 degrees. So the proper way to design your direction intervals is to make sure you don't reuse the same angle. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say for set one, we don't want to go from 270. We want to go from 271. Notice that you can type in any angle you want. You do not have to type in full angles. I can say that I'd only like this direction interval to go from 285. And if I hit it, Practicab will shave that slice of the pie. Here what we're going to do is we're going to say we want it to pick up at 271. The first size break or set is going to go from angle 271 all the way up to angle 90. The second set is going to go from 91 all the way to 270. This way we're never reusing the same direction interval or angle twice. This way if we scroll out and we look at our preview and the preview is a very big help, you can see that we're going to set everything, we're going to keep it on our 45 degrees. You're going to notice that we've got only one, two, three, four fittings showing tags on this set and if we switch it to set one, you should see the tags on the remaining. That means we've designed it correctly. So once we've designed our sets correctly, and the number of sets and the angles that define the sets, now we need to choose the parameters that the tag should follow within each set. And what we're saying is that set one, 
will have different choices from base point all the way down than set two will have from base point all the way down. Once we've chosen the proper amount of direction intervals or the proper number of sets, we now need to go down and select the parameters that Practicat is going to use when it places tags within each set. Once again, set one's base point to shift text. All these parameters for set one will have no effect on set two. We get to choose individual parameters for each set. What we're going to be asked is to choose between two options, the Simple tab and the Advanced tab. You'll notice when we click on the Simple tab that there are less choices here. The remaining tutorials for the full tagging automatics are going to focus on the Advanced tab. The reason is every position point that Simple offers, Advanced tab can mimic. We can do far more with the advanced tab than we can with the simple tab. However, for users that use the system earlier, the simple tab has been left in place. There are separate tutorials on utilizing the simple tab, but for the remainder of this exercise, we're going to go through the advanced tab. The first set of positioning parameters we must answer is the base point parameters. The base point parameters dictate the position on the fitting that the tag is going to start before we offset it in some direction. What we've got over here is we've used a piece number tag to demonstrate this particular portion of the position parameters. We've got the base point set to center, center. What we're going to do here is move it to using the in center. Practicad moves it to the in joint center position. You'll notice here in the second combo box we have left, center, and right. We can say in joint left position or in joint right position. These position points are identical to the ones we use to hold duct in the item box when we're drawing. So we can choose the base points properly. Now take note that there are a lot of different options for base points. We're going to currently go through them. We have in center as represented in the preview now. Then we're going to go to center center. That would be the center center of the fitting. Now we're going to go to the out one or out joint center position. You'll notice that we offer out two and out three. Out two are going to be for fittings with multiple outs. A square T would have an out one and an out two. A three way Y would have out one, out two, and out three. All the positions on all the fittings should be able to be used as a target for placing the tag down in the proper place. You can also use throat and heel parameters if they apply. We're going to choose throat one. Notice by choosing throat one, we don't see any tags in the preview because rectangular duct does not have a throat. However, if we were to switch to a square elbow, square elbows do have a throat. So you can see here that practice is going to place it in throat one. If the elbow or the fitting had more than one throat, you can use throat one and throat two. For example, a radius T. We also have heel parameters. We're going to choose heel one. Notice when we do that, Practicat starts the positioning right off at the heel of the elbow. So you must make sure to choose the proper parameters for the proper fitting. The last one we have here is the crotch parameter. Notice that there is no crotch for elbows. However, if we switch the preview to radius T, You'll notice if you zoom in, the Practicat's placing the tag inside the crotch, and we can use that position to start. So choosing the base points is the first portion of selecting the proper place for your tagging. Once you've chosen the proper base point parameters for placing the tag down in the place you'd like, we now must choose how far from that base point we would like to offset this tag and how we'd like that tag to be angled once it's placed on the drawing. Now currently you can see that we've got the base point parameter center right selected and therefore we've got these length tags in this particular tutorial that are on the center right portion of these pieces of rectangular duct. However, you can see that they're directly over the duct's outline. So with that line running through the text, it's not going to look good on the drawing. Therefore, we would like to start from that base point, but we would like to move the text into the duct. Now to do that, we can use two different types of offset parameters. 
First, we have the offset parameters you see here, which offer two different types, the XYZs and the specials, and we're going to have tutorials on both. And the other way to offset text is using the shift text, both along and across. Now, along and across are actually better options in most situations. So what we're going to do is cover each offset option under the advanced tab and show you where it might be good to use it and where we recommend using one over the other. The first two options we have in the offset field is the option to offset along the X or Y axes. Here we can choose the distance we'd like a specific tag to move from its base point parallel to the X axis, the Y axis, or both. You'll notice you have two different fields here. So we could say we'd like to move the tags over 8 inches on the X axis. Here we're going to put in 8. When we do 8, Practicat will move the tag 8 inches to the right for all of the tags inside a given selection set. If we were to say negative 8, it would move the tags 8 inches over to the left. The Y axis, the positive numbers would go up and the negative numbers would go down. So right here what we're going to do is say on the Y axis, we're going to move it up 6 inches. We hit 6, you can see that the tag will go up 6 inches parallel to the Y axis. If we type in negative 6, it'll move them down 6 inches. So using the X and Y parameters can be useful, but usually only if the duct is going at angles that are parallel to the X or Y axis. It's actually difficult to use X and Y offsets to get your text to be positioned correctly on duct that's on an angle. And that's why we have the along and across parameters we're going to go over. Now one of the options we have is to offset along the Z axis. And the Z axis means along the elevation axis. If we choose axis Z and we leave it at zero, that means that the tag will be placed at the dead center line of the entity. If we give it a positive number, it's going to move up in that value up in elevation. If we give it a negative number, we're going to move it down in elevation. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on a length tag we've got in the duct. And currently we've got the axis Y set at 5, so it's right above the duct line. But we have the axis Z set at 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to press OK and run this automatic. And when we run this automatic along the duct, you're going to see that that tag happens to be at the center line of the duct. And we can see that if we go into the left view. Here you can take a look and notice that the tags are right at the center line of the duct. So axis Z parameter, if set to zero, means center line of duct. Now if it's at the center line of duct, it would be logic to realize that the tags are inside the duct. And therefore, if we go to run a visual style like hidden, we are not going to see the tags, nor are we going to see it if we choose the realistic or shading style. So one of the reasons we might want to move the tags up or down is to move them just above the duct so that we can see the tags in a different visual style. To do that, we're going to go back into the auto tag button and we're going to go to the placement parameter. And what we're going to do here in this particular automatic under placement, right here under axis Z, we're going to say 10 inches. And that's going to move the tags up 10 inches from the center line of the duct they're being attached to. So if we press OK and then we run this automatic again, now you can actually see the text because the text is just a little bit above the duct we attached it to. So this is a really good reason for using the Z axis to make sure your tags are not inside the duct but above it or below it so we can see it in these particular views. The last offset type we have currently is the option for special offset. Now this offset is exactly what it's named. It's a highly specialized offset only use in particular for elbows. To explain how this offset works, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose the base point heel. Now this offset usually only works for the throat base points and heel base points. And what we're going to do here is we're going to choose heel first. When we choose the base point heel, you can see in the preview that the tag, the center of that tag is directly at the heel of this elbow. 
Now imagine we were to draw a line that goes from the heel of the elbow directly to the throat of the elbow. Kind of like the line that veins, turning veins, would be placed parallel to. A line from the heel to the throat. And what we're going to do here is we're going to change the special offset to show you how changing the value for special offset will move this tag either away from the duct along that line or towards the duct or into the duct parallel to that line. If we say let's move it 10, you can see that it's moving the tag exactly 10 inches away from the heel of the elbow parallel to the line we just told you to imagine from point to point. If we were to say negative 10, it would move it 10 inches into the fitting along that line. So positive numbers move it away from the fitting parallel to that line. Negative numbers move it into the fitting. It would be the same if you chose the throat. Here we're going to choose throat 1 and we're going to set it back at 0. You can see where the tag would start at the throat. The center is usually offset from the throat. Now if we give the value 10, it's moving the tag 10 inches parallel to the line but away from the fitting. And if we said negative 10, it's going to be 10 inches into the fitting. There are a lot of different types of tags in Practicad that need to sit by the heels or the throats of elbows and the special offset makes it a lot easier to place these particular tags down. So it generally means moving away from the fitting or into the fitting. And there's a couple different uses for this and we'll go over it in separate exercises, but the first reason for building it was originally intended for elbows. But it does work with boot taps and a couple other different fittings in the software. So that will conclude the tutorial on these two particular offset parameters, the X, Y, Z, and Special. Next, we'll move on to text direction. Text direction allows us to make sure that our tags are orientated correctly on our entities. Under the advanced tab, we have currently seven different text direction types. We're going to go over them one at a time. The first one we have is called top to bottom. You can see over here at the preview that when we choose top to bottom, we are always reading the text from the top of the drawing to the bottom of the drawing. It also means that we would always be turning our head to the right to read the text. You can see here that the 56 length tag, if you turn your head to the right, we're reading it from the top of the drawing to the bottom of the drawing. You can also notice it on the duct that's angled here. So top to bottom means from top of drawing to bottom of drawing. The reverse of that would be bottom to top. That would mean we'd always read the text from the bottom of the drawing to the top of the drawing. Here you would always be turning your head to the left to read the text. So you can see here it is the reverse of top bottom is bottom top. The third option is left to right. What this means is the text will always be left to right on the drawing, just like you're reading a book. Regardless of the duck's orientation, the tag is always perfectly parallel to the horizon. It's always left to right. The next two options are called along the layout and counter layout. These are easily the most popular options. What along the layout means is that the tag should be parallel to the layout line of the duct. Imagine we drew a line from the center in joint to the center out joint of the duct and that this tag should be sitting parallel right on top or right below that line. The reason why it's popular is because what it does is it allows the tag to follow the angle that the duct is to the drawing. So here when you have duct that's on an angle, the 56 inch tag is perfectly parallel with the sides or the center line of the duct. So we use this particular text direction quite often. Now one thing to note is that this text direction will not work in all situations. You can see here currently that we have set one. And set one has the direction interval from 90 degrees to 270 degrees. And here along the layout is going to work very well for all these options. However, if we switch over to set two and we choose along the layout, take a look at the text here. 
you can see that it's actually in our preview it's upside down and the reason why is the duct has been turned upside down when we're going in those directions a very good way to represent this is take a look at this fitting we're going to click on it you can see that the airflow is going from the in joint to the out joint and we've represented a layout line here which is usually invisible and the tag is sitting on top of it now if we were to rotate this duct from going at zero degrees and we were to use the rotation tool and put it up and down you can see that the tag is riding along the layout line if we rotate it at 180 degrees you can see now that the tag because it's sitting on that layout line is now upside down so what we do in this particular case is we use another text direction type called counter layout it is simply the reverse of along the layout and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna open up our screen again we're gonna change our preview back to rec duct we're gonna choose our angle back at 45 and here for set two we're gonna switch from using what was along the layout you can see it's upside down we're gonna switch it to counter layout and when we do that now that is the reverse of along the layout and now my set two angle is exactly where we want it here and of course since we've got set one currently set for along the layout those are going to be where we need them and it's really easy to spot because you're always going to see exact text direction once you change it the preview is going to update the last two options we have are along the joint and its counterpart counter joint if we change it to along joint it means that the text should always be sitting on top or parallel to the in joint so you can see here that the 56 is basically riding parallel to the in joint that would mean that if the duct was running down on the drawing for example over here in set two if we had chosen along the joint for text direction if you look at it here because this duct is coming down on the drawing you'll notice that it's upside down because it's sitting on top of the joint that has just been inverted so in this particular case we would want to use for text like this we'd want to use text direction counter joint essentially it's going to reverse it so by using along the layout counter layout and along joint and counter joint you can make sure that your text is always parallel to either the joint of the duct or the walls of the duct and that's why these options are the most popular the text rotation field is a very simple field to use if after practicat has placed a tag at the proper base point proper offsets and proper text direction we would also like practicat to rotate that text by a specific angle we can type in the rotation angle here notice currently we're just going to focus on the two tags in the preview we have them both running at text direction along the joint so you can see it's parallel to the joint here and the duct that's angled you can see the 56 is parallel to the joint if we wanted to rotate it at 45 degrees after it's been placed we can hit 45 and when we run this automatic it's going to rotate this text 45 degrees if we wanted to rotate it at 25 degrees we can type in 25 and you can see here that we can rotate this text at any degree at a 360 degree plane when you're dealing with certain types of tags like offset transitions and you're dealing with set tags the rotation properties are very useful and there's some advanced tutorials on how to design that so simply put in the rotation angle you'd like here we're just going to leave it at zero and practicad will simply apply it when the tag is placed the next option we have is to choose your hold text by points just like we choose the base point of the fitting at which we're going to place the text we can also choose the point on the tag that we would like to connect to a specific base point for example here you can see that the base point is set at in left and you can see that we're holding the text by the center center that means that the in left portion the base point should be attached to the center center of the tag and that's why right here we've got the 56 right on the corner point of the duct however when we go to choose 
to place our tags down, we can say that we'd like to hold the tag by a specific point. For example, it might make sense here to hold the tag by the left and then hold it by the Z bottom and then make an offset of some type. This way we're holding the bottom left portion of the text to the bottom left portion of the tag. This actually becomes very useful when you go to edit tags and change their font. And there's a separate quick tip on that. But you can choose the point on the tag at which Practicad will use to place at the base point you select. And once again, just like the hold points for duct, on the X you've got left, center, and right. And on the Z, you've got top, center, and bottom. So if you want to hold the tag by the top right, you can set it to do so here. And now you're holding it by the top right corner. The last option for position parameters are the shift text options. We have two fields here, one for a long and one for a cross. Now earlier in the tutorials, we were showing you how to use the offset X and Y axes. However, there are no tags in the software currently that were built in the Practicad data that use the axes X or Y offsets. The main reasoning behind this is though the Z axis and the special are useful tools, the only time we can really use the offset X and Y is if in fact we're going to offset something parallel to the X or Y axes. However, these two offsets will never work well when the duck's going on an angle. That's why along and across these shift text parameters are far better parameters to use. To describe how they work, we're going to choose a base point center right. We're going to get this length tag to be at the center right portion of the duct. We're going to set the text direction to along the layout. So you can see right here that it's parallel to the wall of the duct or it's parallel to the center line of the duct. We're going to say to hold the text by the center and we'll say Z bottom. So now we're holding the bottom point to the center right portion of the duct. And now what we're going to do is go over along and across. If we zoom in on this tag, imagine we were to cut this tag in half using a line that would start from the beginning of the tag and go through the center line of the tag cutting it in half and that line currently would be parallel to the line you see for the duct along moves the text along that line if you give positive values it moves it to the right on that line for example we're gonna say five inch when I hit five it instantly moves the tag five inches along the center line of the text. If I say negative five, we're going to hit five, negative five, it moves it negative inches. So what it's doing is it's moving it along the text in the positive direction or negative direction if we had a line running through the text this way. The across parameters are the same exact function but it's with a line that would be perpendicular to the one we were just describing. Imagine we had a line that would cut the tag in half this way. If you chose positive numbers, it would move the text across that line. Positive would go up and negative would go down that line. For example, here we're going to say across six. You can see it's moving this tag across itself down that line and if we said negative six it would do the reverse so the nice thing about these features is whenever you're dealing with the text direction along the layout counter layout along joint counter joint anytime you use these along and across parameters the tag is always going to be parallel to the walls of the duct and that's what makes it such a nice option and why virtually all the default tags are utilizing these two parameters along the text and across the text. In this part of the tutorial for the placement tab, we're going to show you how to utilize formulas to calculate your offset and positioning parameters for you. Thus far, we've taught you how to place the proper offset values into each field dependent upon the automatic you'd like to run. 
However, you can also have Practicad use mathematical formulas or expressions to choose the value of these fields. You will notice next to both offset parameters, the text rotation, and the shift text parameters that there is a little dialog box that you can check. And when you do that, Practicad is going to open up the expression window. Now, if you've watched the videos on how to design custom tags and the field box, you are already familiar with how to utilize these formulas. Please make sure you've already watched those tutorials. What we're going to do is we're going to show you just one use for having formulas calculate your offset parameters for you. Right now we have the z-axis parameter set as zero. So the offset is zero on the z-axis. We're going to press OK and we're going to run an automatic. And you can see here that this automatic is running a length tag at all the proper positions. However, because the axis z is zero, the tag is in the dead center of the duck. And once again, if we put this on the left view, you can see that the tags are all placed perfectly in the center of the duct if that parameter happens to be zero. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to make it so that we can have Practicad help us to see these tags even when we're in a different visual style. For example, if we go into the hidden visual style, we cannot see the tags because they're inside the duct. Now though we showed you how to put the proper parameter for offset Z to get the tags to be higher than the duct. The problem is you're going to have different ducts of different depths on your drawing. And if you click on this duct here and look at the depth, the depth is 30 inches. So since the tag is in the center of the duct, the tag is sitting 15 inches into the depth. That means if we want the tag to be on top of the duct so it's visible, we need it to be at least 15 inches high. However, if we click on this fitting here where the depth is 18 inches, if the tag is in the center, we need the tag to only be 9 inches higher than the depth of this duct. So we don't want to create different automatics. Instead, what we can do is we can calculate the z-axis offset parameter based on a formula that utilizes the depth of fittings. If it was round duct, we'd use diameter. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into the auto tag icon, and we're going to go back to the placement tab. And remember, Practicad remembers all of the last settings you used in this window. So you don't have to change anything but the difference between the last time we used the tool and the time we're going to use it now. So we're going to come right here to Access Z. And what we're going to do is click on the formula icon. Once Practicad opens up the expression field, we're now going to put in the expression we'd like to use. And here what we're going to do is we're just going to paste one in. We've already copied. We're going to use the formula 0.5 times the depth in, which means half of the depth, and then we're going to say plus 0.2. And the reason we do this is because it moves the tags just 0.2 inches above the top of the fitting, and this seems to work very well when you're trying to see through the realistic and hidden visual styles. You can try different parameters, but in this tutorial, we're going to use 0.2, and most of the tags in the software that were set this way utilize this value. So every time we place a tag on the drawing using this automatic, it's going to look at the depth in of the fitting. It's going to move the tag up half that depth, so it's at the top, and then it's going to move it up an extra 0.2 inches. So we're going to run this automatic by pressing OK. We're going to click on the duct, and now you can see that we've got the length tags on top of all the duct, just a little bit. If we put it in left view, you can see that they're barely on top. You can almost not see it in these particular views. But the tags are just on top of each particular duct, utilizing the formula to calculate the offset. So this is a very useful tool. Here we're just showing you one particular case where you might want to utilize it. But you can have formulas calculate all of the offsets for your tagging parameters. After you have chosen all of your position parameters in the placement tab, you're going to want to utilize the layer choice. 
Basically, there are three options for making sure the tag we're going to place in this automatic get to the layer of your choice. We can choose current layer. Current layer means that whatever layer AutoCAD is on at the time we run this automatic, that the tag inside this automatic should be placed on that layer. Name, if we click on it, will open up a window and allow us to design a layer here. So if we call this PCAD layer one, when we run the automatic, PractiCAD will just create a layer called PCAD layer one and put this tag on top of it. And the last choice is the one that we use for virtually all of our automatics. The default parameter means follow the choices inside your PractiCAD layer mechanism. There are instructional tutorials on how to work with the PractiCAD layer mechanism. It is in your ductwork libraries. It's under presets, layers, and there you've already preset all your layers. And those are your default layers. When you go to use automatics to place tags on your drawing, those tags should follow whatever the default layers are. 99% of all data in Practicat is already set to follow the default layer. However, you still have the option to choose current or name if you'd like to for one particular automatic. One of the last options we have in the placement tab for tagging automatics is the use default place option. This is a very unique option designed for one specific thing. If in fact duct is going to be going up or down in a riser so that it's in an elevation view, you would notice that all of the parameters in this particular section do not apply to that duct because we base everything on the X, Y, and Z axes in terms of direction intervals. There is no direction interval for duct that's going straight up. We only have it for all the intervals in plan view. So if you would like to get tags on ducts that are going in an elevated view, you would need to check use default placement. And when you do that, it will place the tag, but it'll place it in the center of the fitting. That's where the default placement usually is. What we're going to do here is we're going to uncheck it and run the automatic once. We're going to press OK, and here we've got an elevated view with one fitting that's going to be up in a rising setting. We're going to click, and notice that all the ducts get length tags, but this piece doesn't because the parameters for the length tag that we've chosen in terms of direction interval do not apply to this fitting. And since we had use default place unchecked, it did not place a fitting here. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete these fittings. We're going to come back into the auto tag button. And now we're just going to check the option for use default place. Here we're going to say check it. Now if we check it, we press OK, we run the automatic, it tags everything, and it puts the length tag in the middle. The reason the option was added is because many draftsmen would prefer not to have their duct when it's in an elevated view, tag. They rather tag it in the cross section, and there are tutorials on using our cross sectioning. So if you don't want to have 10 pieces stacked on top of each other with 13 piece numbers that are just stacked in elevated view, we can uncheck use default place. PractiCAD will run tagging sequences, leave these ducts blank, and then we can take cross sections of those ducts and tag them separately. So we have the option to keep use default place on or off. The last option we have in the tagging automatics is the tool copy from automatic. This is one of the most useful tools in the software when you're designing data. This button happens to be at the bottom of not only the placement tab, but also the tag, conditions, and even the selection tab. It's also in auto tags and all different sections of the software. What it's designed to do is instead of answering all of the placement parameters, conditions, selection parameters, if we already know we've got an automatic with those parameters in it, we could come in here and click copy from automatic. If we click on that button, Practicat will open up a window and will give us the option to choose the automatic of which we'd like to copy the parameters and paste them into the auto we're about to run. So we can open up tagging, go to Practicat Autos, we can open up a size tag autos, and we can come right here and click on the length tag, 
And when we do it, it is actually filling up all of our view, place by, direction, interval, all of the parameters are being filled and copied from that automatic. And now what we can do is we can simply run it. This is very good for copying and modifying automatics or just quickly getting data from one automatic into another one you might want to run. So look for the copy automatic button in virtually all areas of the software having to do with tags or automatics ultimatics.